I think it's time to start uh, today's the webinar in ICC. And this is a very new beginning of one year of the 2023. Uh, first of all, uh, on behalf of uh, Chang'an, I would like to uh, say Happy New Year for all our participants today, tonight, or this morning. Good morning and uh, good evening for my dear friends. Uh, I am P.Y. Cho. Uh, today is I will moderate this uh, webinar today. And uh, welcome to the ICC webinar again. Today, our speaker is the Professor uh, Takayuki Handa. And he is the Associate Professor in the Department of Plastic and the Reconstructive Surgery at Iwade Medical University. Professor Handa has come to Chang'e Memorial Hospital for one-year fellowship at the year of 2003 to 2004. In Iwade Medical University, Professor Handa devoted himself to the care of clap management, including team-based preoperative evaluation, surgical innovation, and the post-operative multidisciplinary care. Today, uh, we are so honored to have Professor Takayuki Handa Sensei with us to present the topic, clap management. Also, three experienced clap surgeons are invited to the panel. The first of all is Dr. Lan uh, from Hanoi, Vietnam. And then is the Dr. Melon, uh, our friend from India, and the Dr. Tin Chen Lu from Chang'e Memorial Hospital, Taiwan. In the beginning, Professor Han Dao will give a presentation around the 30 to 40 minutes, then we'll follow by the panel discussion, and uh, all the participants are <clears> welcome <throat> to leave you a question in the chat room, and we are proceed to our QA section. So I can wait to have Professor Handa to give the lecture. So Professor uh, Dozo. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yes. Uh, thank you, Professor Cho. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, very yes. clear. Uh, okay. Uh, Thank you for the introduction for me. Uh, <clears throat> my name is uh, Honda from uh, Japan. Today, uh, I will talk about the uh, uh, com comprehensive uh, clear care uh, of the patient. So now uh, let's start my presentation. I will start the, my uh, screen, share the screen. Yes, please. And the How about, is that okay for, can I yes. see you my slide? Yes. Okay. okay, yeah, very good. Okay. Let's start my presentation. Uh, today I will talk about the uh, comprehensive breath management of the uh, uh, Kuskea. Uh, I have no COI in this presentation. Uh, let me introduce myself uh, briefly. Uh, uh, briefly. Uh, I graduated uh, medical school in 1993 and the, in, in 2001, I, I got board certificate uh, from the Japanese Society of Plastic Surgery. And uh, during the 2003 to, to 2004, I visited Chang'e Memorial Hospital and take a fellowship at uh, the Cranial Facial Center. And I'm an associate professor of the uh, Iwate Medical University. Uh, after I go back uh, from Chang'e Memorial Hospital, I start my career for uh, the uh, patient care. The, <clears throat> this is a picture uh, that we took at the, when I was in uh, Chang'e Memorial Hospital. Yeah, it's Professor Yuri Chen here, and uh, Professor Nodo here, and the Professor Wei here, and uh, this is uh, Professor Epans. He's uh, just coming to uh, Taiwan for uh, give us a lecture. Also, uh, Professor Nodo, He's, uh, he's already left from Taiwan at that time, but uh, he uh, sometimes come to Taiwan to give us a lecture or something. And the uh, Professor Bean is uh, my uh, good friend. Uh, I and Dr. Bean uh, 
who is uh, spent the uh, same time during my fellowship. Uh, maybe he is uh, coming today to this webinar today. The period of the 2003 to 2004 is uh, maybe uh, someone uh, still remember that the that was uh, uh, SARS, uh, a period of the SARS. That is uh, severe acute respiratory syndrome. That is like uh, COVID-19. Uh, that is emerging uh, from the uh, beginning of the 2003, uh, about the February to March. And the, from middle of the April, and the number of patients really increased. Uh, and the, it's lasting about the uh, end of the May. Uh, during uh, that period, uh, is uh, the many of the hospital is uh, locked down. So uh, some of many of the medical uh, workers are locked into their hospital. They cannot go home until the uh, the SARS was subsided. So now uh, I start my, my uh, talk uh, about the craft care in our unit. Okay, uh, at first I introduce uh, my uh, geographic dimension of our unit. Um, our unit is located in the northern part of Japan and the, this is the Iwate prefecture and then my hospital is located here. The, this uh, red circle uh, is uh, indicated about the, the most of the uh, patient is uh, come from the, this uh, area. This is about the <coughs> two hours uh, by car from the edge of this circle. And the, if the, the patient can use the express train, it is about the 30 to 40 minutes to uh, here to here. Uh, I put the, this is the uh, same size of the Taiwan, then uh, maybe you can uh, compare the how is the size of our area included. Uh, a more uh, local uh, map is uh, here. And uh, used to be before uh, 2019, uh, we have a medical hospital here and dental hospital here. Is uh, in the same area, so the, we and the dental doctors uh, communicate each other very easily. But at uh, 2019, the, the medical hospital moved to the more remote area, so that now uh, we are remote uh, about the 20 to 30 minutes by car. But anyway, we we'll still uh, collaborate for patient care uh, with dental doctors. <clears throat> this is a timeline of correct patient care in a unit. Uh, basically, we do uh, lip surgery at the three months of uh, old, old and the uh, palate surgery at one year of old age. And the, at the five years old, we did a secondary division for a correct patient. And the, at the same time, um, if the condition is okay, uh, we do uh, our available bone graft. After that, about the 17 years old or 18 years old, we do orthognatic surgery and the final touch-up surgery uh, we do. Uh, also, the uh, feeding support is a start from at birth. And the speech therapy will start about three to four years old age. And the also orthodontic treatment starts from three to four years old. Uh, now, so now uh, start the first phase of the craft uh, care. Uh, the, the before birth, many of you know that uh, you can uh, diagnosis of the craft uh, patient uh, before delivery. This is a little bit old, old data, but the I corrected the patient uh, during the two. 2012 to 2014, uh, 15 cases with sleep and parade. Uh, of these patients, about one third of the patients have a, a prenatal diagnosis. Uh, but this 
as you know, the sorry, uh, crest palate is uh, not easily uh, diagnosed during the pregnancy. So if the excluded crest palate patient, uh, about the half of the patient uh, have a diagnosis before uh, delivery. But now, uh, in my expression uh, about the year of 2020 to 2022, uh, about the 80 to 90% of the patient have already a diagnosis about cliff deep uh, before uh, the delivery. So uh, many of the patient uh, parents uh, already informed that the babies uh, have a cliff deep uh, palate. Uh, in such uh, parents, if the parents uh, wish to uh, explain about the prenatal counseling, uh, we do uh, explain with the plastic surgeon and the uh, orthodontic doctors, which included about the timeline of the treatment course until 18 years old, and especially uh, the, what kind of surgery and what is the timing of surgery to be needed. Uh, during this uh, treatment. Uh, also, we explain about the necessity of the interdisciplinary treatment. Um, that is uh, a surgeon and the orthodontist, uh, ENT surgeon, and of, course, and the, of course, the pediatric physician to be collaborated with, uh, the, for the uh, rest patient care. And the one more thing important is a uh, financial support. Um, in Japan, and the cleft lip and palate is uh, covered by uh, public health uh, insurance. But the in the uh, other, the local host, uh, local government uh, can uh, pay for the financial support for uh, the babies. So we uh, inform about uh, how can uh, reach to such financial support to the uh, parents. And the in some instances. Some of the uh, mothers uh, just came to uh, uh, the, uh, here to just only for delivery of the babies. And after the baby is delivery, uh, they go back to their hometown. In such cases, uh, we inform the, for the parents uh, where to, uh, to go to the, uh, for the great patient uh, before about such information to be uh, given to the parents so the after the patient uh, the first at the initial visit yes this is uh, also the same explanation to the parents if they know they do not have uh, any information so uh, how uh, when and the what kind of surgery is needed and the also the financial support is be uh, explained to pa uh, parents uh, this is a easy distribution of the uh, at the initial visit of the. This is a uh, for the orthodontic department patients. So um, this is uh, because orthodontic doctors uh, can accept accepted the patient from not only our patient, also the other hospital uh, patient of, from other hospital accepted. So this is not only the babies, but basically uh, I. Uh, uh, encouraged to the uh, pediatric physician and the uh, obstetric uh, surgeon to refer the crest patient as soon as possible uh, within one month. So these patients are maybe from our unit. The this this patient about one fourth of the patients is uh, refer within one week, and the, about half of the patient uh, refer to be. Within uh, two weeks. So the uh, once the patient come to the orthodontic uh, department, the this pre surgical uh, treatment is starts from as soon as possible. At the same time, uh, the feeding support, the how to feed the, these patients from uh, bottle feeding or breast feeding. The, for the orthodontic tr treatment. Uh, the hot plate is made, and they also uh, nose alveolar molding or lip taping or nostril retainer. Uh, this is a, a representative case 
for the uh, cleft lip and palate patients. Uh, for the, these patients, uh, hot plate and the PNAM procedure is made, uh, done uh, about 90% uh, of the patients. And the, for the, uh, this is a uh, uh, cleft lip and alveolus patient. About half of the patient received the PNAM procedure and the rest of the patients uh, received uh, nostril retainer and lip taping for the uh, pre-surgical treatment. This is uh, for the crisp uh, parade patient. Uh, about one fourth of the patient has a, a hot spray and the other uh, three fourths is the observation. These are included only the soft parade, uh, soft crisp parade. And if the patient have only cleft lip, um, usually we do a lip taping and nostril retainer. Um, <clears throat> this is a uh, some uh, uh, discussion uh, about the uh, PNAM procedure, but uh, in such cases, uh, this is really effective. This is a, a bilateral cleft lip and patient and the, the uh, premaxilla is severely distorted. But the, after the correct uh, treatment of the PNAM procedure, the uh, premaxilla is uh, going to midline and set into the correct position and easy for deep surgery. Also, this is uh, another case. This is uh, uh, also uh, seriously uh, uh, distorted in the premaxilla, but these are uh, moved to this position before surgery, so we can easily do the deep repair. So <clears throat> at the initial visit, the orthodontic doctor uh, make a hot plate immediately, and the, the patient were uh, recalled one week after and checked that the hot plate was uh, properly fitted to the uh, maxilla. After that, the, uh, the recheck the three to four weeks every until deep surgery. And during this period, uh, orthodontist uh, made the uh, other nasal bar for uh, nasal uh, uh, nasal molding. During this period, usually uh, about three to four times PG uh, before surgery. Uh, for lip surgery, uh, we do about the three months of age. And the, I applied the uh, Mora's technique just I ran in Changun for unilateral cleft lip and the, the Marken technique for bilateral cleft lip patient. And the, I do rhinoplasty uh, in the same time uh, if needed. And the, also if the <coughs> alveolar cleft is, uh, uh, Position is good, and the, the these uh, segments are uh, uh, good position. We do uh, digital periosteoplasty uh, at the same time. The about the uh, pre-surgical uh, pre care, antibiotics are administrating just before surgery and after surgery. This is a representative case. So three months old baby, uh, in a third, uh, perfect under all this. Uh, uh, it's close. And uh, I did uh, rhinoplasty with the Tajima incision. And this is a six years post operatively. The uh, post operative care for the lip surgery. Uh, oral feeding starts uh, just immediately after recovery from the anesthesia uh, with the hot spray. Uh, we allow the bottle feeding or breast feeding also. The patient stayed in the hospital about three to six days. Uh, if the patient is uh, living uh, near the hospital, uh, the patient go, go home about three days after the surgery. But the patient uh, living uh, far away from the hospital. And the patient stayed in about six days, uh, post-surgery, the stitch removal, and go home. 
Uh, we recall the patient uh, about two weeks after, and then check the wounds and also uh, how the feeding is okay or not. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, okay, and the uh, lip taping and nostril retainer continues for six months. Uh, regarding the uh, crest palate surgery, I applied it the, about the 12 months of age. And the one stage repair, about uh, uh, the two flat technique for with uh, intravenous veloplasty for a hard and a soft palate closure. And if the patient is only a soft palate crest, I applied for follow the procedures. And the, if the patient have uh, otitis media with diffusion, uh, we ask the ENT surgeon to put into the grommet tube. So uh, the one month before the cleft palate surgery, uh, refer the patient to the ENT doctors and check if they needed the grommet tube insertion. <clears throat> uh, this is a representative case of the two-fold palate plastic with intervertebral pasty. Uh, here I uh, sutured the, the <coughs> muscle uh, at the posterior side of the soft palate. And the, here I put the local part, part flap or the, uh, to feel the mucosa defect on the right hand side. Uh, this is a very recent case, but uh, before I used the buccal fat part, uh, I usually choose uh, a surgical cell to fill in the defect. Uh, Post-operative care for the crest palate surgery, uh, the, I used the antibiotics uh, cefmetazole for administration for three days. And for the diet, uh, the <clears throat> day after the surgery, day one, uh, this is a liquid diet, and for the day two to day three, uh, period diet. And after the day four, uh, rice well. Uh, and the first two days, uh, I put the gas, another gas tube uh, for the babies and the uh, tube feeding support uh, for two days. And I put the arm restriction to prevent some sucking. The patient is go home uh, six days after the surgery. After that, uh, we uh, allow a rice grill for about two weeks. I recall the patient uh, two weeks after the discharge and the check the uh, parite wound is okay. And if it is okay, uh, allow to normal diet. Uh, <clears throat> this is a, a diet of the, we uh, provided during the uh, hospital stay. Uh, this is a pure liquid diet. And the, this is a period diet for day two to day three. And this is a rice cooler diet after uh, day four surgery. We educated to the mothers uh, that this uh, uh, diet uh, to make after the discharge from hospital. Okay, now uh, I move to the second stage of the uh, first care. Uh, for the speech therapy, uh, I usually start from is three to four years old. The kids who are before entering school, uh, the, we, I refer to the patient to the ENT clinic or a local hospital to uh, for speech training. And the, in some uh, instances, uh, prim at the primary school uh, can take care of these uh, patients. So I ask the speech training uh, for the primary school. And the, after entering school, usually they have a speech program. So uh, they enter the speech therapy program at the school. They usually uh, have a class uh, once a week. And uh, during this period, if the VPI or present or suspected, uh, another pharyngoscope examination is done at the five to seven years old. Uh, I will talk this uh, about the uh, data. Uh, regarding uh, orthodontic treatment prior to uh, alveolar bone graft, this is a, a phase one early age treatment. 
this included the maxillary expansion and the correction of the tuterosi of the anterior teeth. <clears throat> uh, at the age of five, uh, we planned for uh, alveolar bone graft in the secondary revision. Uh, for the evaluation of the alveolar cleft, I applied for a cone beam CT uh, for uh, evaluation. This is uh, good for uh, because of the low dose radiation exposure, and uh, this is can take uh, the sitting portion, so it is easy to take for even for small children. And for secondary division, uh, we have plan for lip division and the rhinoplasty. For the alveolar bone graft. Uh, uh, I employ the scalpel fascia graft uh, to reinforce mucoperous pocket that is published by Dr. Rowe and Donick at the PRS uh, 2017. And also uh, for uh, pain management of the bone graft site, I, I do the local injection of the level of uh, local anesthesia. This is a long acting local anesthesia lasting about uh, 24 hours. And also acetaminophen administration for three days. Uh, antibiotics is administrated for the three days. Uh, diet is the same as the cretopalate surgery. Uh, liquid diet and soft diet, the rice gruel. The, uh, these are uh, five to six years old kids. So we allow the, the shortcut noodles from day four. Hospital stays six days after surgery and we call our patient clinic two weeks later. And if the wound is okay, we allow for normal diet. Uh, <clears throat> the uh, bone graft was evaluated six months after the surgery using the combined CT. And if the bone graft is sufficient, we start the second stage of the uh, treatment. The, for the VPI surgery, uh, the, we do another pharyngoscope for the evaluation. We check the closure pattern of the uh, pharyngeal space and the closure ratio. But the, if the patient is not tolerated for the narrow pharyngoscope, uh, I use a lateral cephalogram during phonation. And for the surgery, uh, I use uh, a fertile palatoplasty for a light case and the pharyngeal flap combined with the fertile palatoplasty. If I do a pharyngeal flap surgery, uh, I put the patient for ICU uh, one night to uh, check the respiratory problem. As you know, the, the examination, uh, the evaluation, the nasopharyngeal uh, closure, it's uh, using about the this, like the closure pattern, coronal, sagittal, and circular pattern, and also the closure ratio. Closure ratio zero means uh, nothing moved to any movement, and the 1.0 means uh, complete closure of the uh, nasopharyngeal space. The, This is a, a movie of the other pharyngoscope. This patient uh, uh, PPI. Relatively poor uh, lateral wall movement, also the parade movement. So I diagnose this uh, patient as a uh, uh, with a uh, circular pattern and the closure ratio is 0 0.2 to 0 0.3 at most. Uh, this is a lateral cephalogram during the phonation. This is uh, uh, at rest position. And this is a patient saying, uh, this is a patient saying he, uh, during the phonation, the, the soft palate is moved to uh, posterior, uh, upward and posterior 
but they not completely close the uh, Hollinger space. So they have a, a VPI. And uh, this is a uh, um, criteria for uh, treatment uh, for the VPI. This is uh, published by uh, Dr. Yamaguchi and Dr. Lo and, and for practice uh, PRS at the 2016. Uh, <clears throat> basically, I follow this uh, criteria. If the closure ratio is 0 0.8 to 0 0.9, I choose uh, follow the part of plasty. And, but the, if the, the closure ratio is less than 0 0.7, I would choose uh, Hollinger flap. And according to the closure ratio, I would change uh, the uh, width of the Hollinger flap. Uh, but if for the uh, uh, VPI surgery, uh, I applied uh, for the Dr. Philip Chen's procedure. This is uh, uh, combined with the pharyngeal flap with paro paratoplasty. So uh, in this procedure, the pharyngeal flap is uh, using to uh, elongate the nasal side of the soft palate. And the, the muscle of the soft palate is reoriented during the surgery. This is a photograph during the surgery. Uh, first, I cut the soft palate at the midline and the small cut to the nasal side of the mucosa a little bit. So make uh, this uh, square shaped defect here. And the, I raise the uh, uh, pharyngeal flap here and put up to this defect. And after that, the muscle is re reoriented uh, at the posterior side of soft palate and the oral mucosa is close as the G fashion. For the management of oral nasal fistula, uh, for the fistula, the soft part is easily closed, uh, a simply uh, uh, suture. And the the uh, Procedure is at, usually I do at five years of age, concomitant with the secondary division. And the, if the fistula is located at the, the alveolar crest, I uh, do uh, this close at the repaired at the alveolar graft, say, same time. But the, if there are not sufficient tissue for close the uh, defect, I use a tongue flap for close the wound. This is a case of bilateral Crepican palate, nine years of age. Uh, this is not a good uh, condition of the mucosa, so I choose the tongue flap and the whole clothes, the oronasal fistula. Uh, I put the tie over fixation for one, one week, and the diet is also the same as the first palate surgery. At the, the two uh, weeks later, uh, under the general anesthesia, we can uh, flap, uh, the, the, uh, we do a flap detachment. Uh, at this point in time, uh, usually uh, it can be uh, done uh, oral intubation, but the, it's very uh, needed special attention for uh, intubation. So every time I also ask to the anesthesia to uh, very careful intubation to not to detach this flap from the uh, palate. Okay, um, this is the final stage uh, of the patient care after the uh, alveolar bone graft. After the ABG, uh, also don't be driven, they still continue uh, phase one treatment. That means uh, maxillary expansion uh, in the protraction of maxilla in the correction of the anterior teeth. And the, after the completion of the growth, uh, start, uh, start the uh, phase two treatment for uh, <clears throat> uh, phase two treatment. That means alignment of the palm and teeth with full brace. And also at that time, uh, decision making with the necessity for the orthognatic surgery. Uh, 
regarding also grant surgery, uh, this is already talking in this uh, webinar many times. Uh, we choose one jaw or two jaw surgery depending on the patient's uh, condition. And the, also we uh, select a single sprint or double sprint. Uh, it's also uh, uh, depending on the patient patient uh, condition or surgeon preference or also dentist preference. For the maxillary advancement, uh, I usually uh, Advancement is uh, are limited to less than five millimeters. But the, in some instances, if the maxillary advancement needed more than five millimeters, I would choose the destruction of the genesis. Uh, but the, the case is very rare. And the, uh, just recently, uh, I uh, started to use the uh, ultrasonic driven surgical tool. Uh, this is because of the ultrasonic driven. This is less traumatic for a soft tissue in the nerve. And uh, this is not uh, any evidence, but uh, I feel this is uh, more uh, reduced, uh, less blood loss uh, using this surgical device. So maybe later uh, I needed some data for this uh, device. This is a representative identity case of the uh, unilateral peripheral palate. The patient has a uh, occlusal count and the facial symmetry. So I choose a uh, two jaw surgery for the patient. Maxilla is deviated. In this patient, um, the, for the uh, two millimeter impaction for right maxilla and the five millimeter elongation and advancement for the left side maxilla. Uh, I put the bone graft uh, to the bone gap at the left maxilla from the uh, mandible. The mandible setback uh, according to the sprint. This is a post op status of the patient. This uh, x ray. <clears throat> and the, uh, because the, many of the correct patients have uh, deviations of the nasal septum, so the patient may. Uh, complain about nasal obstruction. So recently we collaborated with the ENT surgeon to uh, do uh, uh, septal surgery with the inferior turbinate reduction is concurrent in the second line of plasty. Uh, this is a uh, other patient, 18 years old female, left clip and pellet. She is uh, uh, complained about the deviation of the nose and also complain about the nasal obstruction. So we asked to the ENT surgeon to collaboration for the surgery. The, in the CT scan, the, you can see the deviation of the nose and the deviation of the nasal septum and the hypertrophy of the inferior turbinate on both sides. And the, this is a middle turbinate. In this patient, uh, also, don't recommend it to put the bone graft to the here. So, bone graft is also added to this surgery. In uh, this surgery, uh, we press the surgeon do uh, osteotomy of the nasal bone and the alveolar bone graft to the maxilla and the deep division. And the, we apply <coughs> put the cartridge graft to the septum. And the ENT surgeon do the septoplasty uh, and the reduction of the both side of the inferior turbinate and the reduction of the middle turbinate. This is the uh, uh, endoscope findings of the nasal cavity. This is a pre-op, this is the uh, post-op. The hypertrophy uh, inferior turbinate is reduced after the surgery. And this is the uh, uh, deviated septum it's uh, reduced uh, and the, the nasal cavity is patent after the surgery. <clears throat> this uh, uh, post-operative CT findings, the deviation of the nasal septum is corrected and the, the nasal cavity is patent. This is uh, patient uh, before and uh, after the surgery the nasal deviation is corrected. 
Okay, this is, uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, I don't know. Uh, I usually uh, plan the uh, patient care uh, finish at the 18 years old. But the, you know, the some of the patients still uh, complain about the, the correction for the uh, lip, uh, lip, uh, lip or nose uh, deformity. Uh, such included uh, scar revision or uh, api flap and the rhinoplasty, only the fistula closure, and also gnatic surgery. Uh, this is a patient of 37 years old. Uh, he is complaining about the central lip deficiency. He is a uh, bilateral cleft lip and the plated somewhere. So uh, we uh, applied for RP flap surgery for this patient. Uh, we would this central segment uh, completely, and I put a uh, lower lip uh, RP flap to set in to the upper lip. Now this is the five months after the surgery. The upper lip deficiency is corrected. Okay, this is the uh, last three slides. This is a uh, member of the orthodontic doctors. We can we are uh, now uh, collaborating. This uh, is a uh, Professor Sato, and uh, this is a uh, Dr. Kawajima. And this is a plastic surgery members. Uh, I am here, and this is a uh, Professor Sakuraba of, uh, of uh, <coughs> our boss. Okay, uh, this is in conclusion. Uh, I here in uh, in this presentation, I presented the uh, comprehensive cleft patient care. Uh, the treatment course may differ for each cleft team according to the team members and the experience of the team team, and also the may affect for the social environment, etc. I hope uh, it will be uh, some difference for uh, the ICC members. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Honda, for your very uh, comprehensive uh, to introduction of the care of the CLEP patients. And uh, thank you for your so serious to give us the information about the uh, sequential of the care uh, in your treatment of the patient with CLEP as well. So now I will open the panel discussion now uh, from our three uh, CLEP surgeon. And the first of all, I would like to invite Dr. Lan and to raise your comment or if you have any question uh, for Professor Honda. So thank you, Dr. Lan, please. Yeah. Good evening, all surgeons. Uh, thank you, Dr. Honda, for your nice presentation. Um, Dr. Lan from the Vietnam National Children's Hospital. And I have uh, two questions uh, for Dr. Honda. And my first question is, uh, why do you do available bone graft when children are five years old? Okay, uh, you mean the, it's better to do a more later period? Later is eight, eight to nine years old? Uh, yeah, yes. Ah, yes. Okay. Um, yes, uh, um, we changed the uh, protocol uh, from the uh, the alveolar bone graft used to be we do uh, ABG at eight to uh, nine years old, but the, we moved to this is to uh, more earlier or five years old because uh, we put the, the surgery uh, to the uh, combined with the division surgery and the so so that the the patient cannot uh, do not use the semester. Uh, uh, summer vacation and during the school age. Uh, we and, and I and the orthodontic doctors uh, think about the, we don't uh, use the uh, summer vacation for the patients. So we uh, made the, this surgery to the five years old age. Yeah, but you were, uh... 
uh, you uh, experience uh, when do ABG when the children uh, five years old, but you feel it is uh, better for the teeth more than when we do ABG when the patient uh, from uh, uh, nine or twelve or seven mm -hmm. years old. Mm -hmm. Uh, this is, uh, we started about five years uh, before, so now uh, we uh, need to uh, evaluation for the change of protocol, but uh, nowadays I don't feel that this is a problem for the five years old surgery. Yes, thank you. And, uh, yeah, I have uh, the second question. Um, that's, um, can you say some uh, experience about uh, oral nasal fistula uh, ONF management? And, uh, and do you uh, usually use a buccal flap for ONF management or not? Uh, buccal buc flap? Yeah, buccal flap. Uh, yeah, uh, I don't have experience about it, but because of uh, mucosal flap or buccal flap flap. I try to use, but uh, so far I don't have any experience about back of heart problems. Mm, but how, how about the size of uh, fistula and how old you decide close the fistula for cleft children? Um, usually I um, try to close uh, fistula at the age of five to six years old. I mean, the at the, the uh, Arabella bone graft. So, uh, if the because the, uh, the if the, there is a only the fistula, it's very uh, difficult to to uh, arabella bone graft. So, I close the wound uh, at the same time of the arabella bone graft. Thank you, um, but uh, I, I mean, how how is the size of fistula uh, mm -hmm. when you decide you use a tongue flap and uh, mm -hmm. when you decide oh. you use mm -hmm. a two flap? Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, for tongue flap, uh, <clears throat> I think I can apply the tongue flap procedure uh, more than the six years old uh, after the patient entering the preschool. Uh, but the, of course, this is uh, for uh, difficult for thoroughly for small children. Uh, may better for eight or nine years old. This is more easy uh, to tolerate for the children. Um, but uh, but how is the size the size of fistula? Uh, size of size of fistula. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is it uh, even if the is a large fistula? Oh, okay, the mm -hmm. defect size. Maybe yeah, defect, defect size. size. Yeah. Ah, yes. okay. Um, uh, usually, uh, it's difficult to say, but the about the more than five mill, five six millimeters, and the uh, maybe I would choose the uh, tongue flap. Uh, but it depends on the uh, condition of the uh, mucosa uh, around the fistula. If the the, the mucosa is more scary, scar, scarred uh, fistula, it's very difficult to close uh, for the uh, local mucosa. Maybe I choose the tongue flap, even the fistula size is small. Dr. Lan, you are muted. Yeah, muted. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. Um, I understand. Thank you, Dr. Handa, for you. your presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Lan. And then uh, we proceeded to our next panelist, uh, Dr. Mellon. Dr. Mellon, please. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Honda, for an excellent and uh, comprehensive overview of cleft management. Uh, there are a few uh, points which I noticed, ex especially in your primary palatoplasty technique. You said for soft palate repair, you prefer furloughs, and uh, for complete palate, you use two flat palatoplasty. Why, why do you think such a rational 
uh, and which technique do you think provides better speech outcome in your experience? Uh, excuse me, uh, what is the first question? Uh, you have two school of thought, like for primary palate repair. Mm -hmm. One is furloughs for soft palate and uh, conventional radical muscle dissection for complete palate. Mm -hmm. Why is that? And which technique do you think provides better speech in your experience? Um, because I, uh, I I want to do uh, uh, close the uh, complete growth palate uh, easily. So if I can do a uh, follow protoplasty uh, is possible, uh, I want to do a uh, follow protoplasty. But in some instances, uh, it's difficult for close the uh, hard part, hard part uh, cleft. So uh, I, if uh, uh, the patient for the uh, complete cleft, I choose the two flat part of plasty. And the, if there's uh, can close uh, using the faro part of plasty, I choose faro. But the, I don't have any comparative data for the speech variation, so I don't I don't uh, speak say which is better for the speech. Is that correct? Uh, the second point is uh, with regard to your lip repair. Uh, mm -hmm. Do you close that anterior one third, or what is the technique that you use to close that nasal floor as well as uh, anterior one third? You mean the hard part, uh, anterior part of the hard part? Hard part, yeah. Uh, I don't close the hard part, hard part. Uh, other other deep repair. Uh, this is uh, uh, op, uh, I don't touch to the hard part at the, the deep repair. So, do you notice more chance of uh, alveolar cleft? I mean, fistulas in that uh, junction. Yes. Uh, oh, yes. The alveolar cleft is remaining until the uh, ABG. Uh, so yes, uh, I don't close the uh, anterior part, so there's a still remaining cleft uh, until ABG closure. And at what age do you prefer to use a pharyngeal flap? Is there any minimum sort of age that you will say, like this is the age group which I want to do a pharyngeal flap? Mm. Okay. Um, initially, uh, I want to close the. Uh, I want to do a BPH uh, pharyngeal first surgery at the before entering school. But the I to uh, do a pharyngeal flap surgery, I want to evaluate using uh, uh, pharyngeal scope examination. But this is very difficult to do a pharyngeal. Uh, nasopharyngeal gyroscope uh, for the younger age of children. So uh, usually I do uh, pharyngeal surgery about the six to seven or eight years of old age. That is, I can do uh, nasopharyngeal scope for uh, evaluation for the, these patients. And with regard to your ABG do at five years, uh, mm -hmm. ideally we, literature says like you time the uh, surgery at the time of eruption of permanent teeth in that cleft. Mm -hmm. And when you do it at five years, do you notice any uh, lack of eruption of tooth or any chance of resorption of your bone graft at say like eight or nine years when you take a repeat CBCT or an X-ray? Um... So far, I don't feel the uh, the drawback for area uh, ABG. So, um, you mean the bone disruption after the surgery? Uh, so far, I don't feel. Yeah, like is, uh, say if the tooth doesn't erupt into <laughs> the. Yeah, say so when you do it five years, if the tooth doesn't erupt into that graft site, always there is a chance of resorption of the graft. Uh, so, I don't feel so, so far. Do you I don't think feel so five far. years? Yeah. You mean, is it too early? Okay. okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, we, that is uh, like when you look back into the literature, you want a tooth into the erupted, tooth erupting into the graft site for the graft to hold. 
So like uh, if you say five years and two doesn't erupt by seven or eight years, most mm. likely the graph might resolve. Mm. So I wanted to know your experience whether the graph still holds on. Um, mm, now, uh, I still need it uh, uh, for uh, evaluation. Uh, but now uh, it's okay about it's doing at uh, five years old. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much for an uh, informative talk. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Mellon, for your questions. And then uh, following the panelist is the Professor Tin Chen Lu. Uh, hello, Dr. Lu, please. Hi. Hi, Dr. Honda. So uh, thank you very much for your very detailed um, speech and excellent result. Uh, I only have uh, two small questions. The first one is for the isolated cleft palate patient. In what condition you need a hot plate? Because I saw it on, on your slide, there's mm. a percentage you, you will do a, a plate for the cleft palate. Uh, it's uh, usually the, the indication is uh, decided by the orthodontic doctors, so I don't touch about the indication. But uh, if there is a, a, a complete cleft with uh, in the uh, hard palate cleft, uh, the orthodontist may apply apply the hot spray. But mm -hmm. if the patient only have a soft palate, uh, soft cleft palate. Uh, they don't make a uh, uh, hot plate until the, they don't have any problem for the feeding. Okay, yeah, because uh, I I think we our patient I I I think they always they don't need a hot plate for the feedings. They they can only use the nipples, special nipples mm -hmm. from Japan. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah, so they can feed. So mm -hmm. I. I don't think maybe only one uh one patient they need a plate for the hot palate, but almost every every clay palate patient babies they can feed in mm. with the nipples mm. only. Oh. Mm. Yeah. Okay. So the second question is uh you mentioned that uh if the patient um need uh when uh need the maxilla advancement like more than five millimeter, you will use the distraction osteogenesis. So do you use a the external distraction or you use an internal distraction? Uh, I use the external device with Haro, Haro oh. device. Okay. But uh, I, this is very, uh, I don't have not so many uh, experience. Uh, so I don't, I don't have to say anything about <laughs> this distraction. Okay. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Lu, uh, for your comment. And then following, I would like to invite it, uh, Dr. our chief, uh, Dr. Clement Lin, uh, the old friend of uh, Professor Handa to give the comment. Thank you, Professor Lin. Hi, Dr. Hi. Honda. Hi. Long time no see. <laughs> no, <definitely. laughs> yeah. oh, okay. Oh, okay. Now I can see you. Yeah. Good and day. especially in winter season, I will miss you because uh, <laughs> uh, last time I I visit uh, the 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 ski resort and and we yes. meet together. Yes, and, yes, yes. And I hopefully uh, after this uh, pandemic, everyone can meet each other again. And, yes, please come to. Uh, yes, and have some catch up. And yes. uh, about <clears throat> research, I'm more interested in the nasal surgery. And I yes. I, I heard that uh, you combine with the mm -hmm. ENT surgeons to treat the uh, nasal problems. Uh, yes. Can you talk about more about the benefits for the combination surgery? Because most of the time, plastic surgeon will think that rhinoplasty is our job to, to help the patient. But in your case, you, you combine with the ENT surgeon and do some treatment inside. And what's your opinion about that? Hmm. Okay. <clears throat> um, yes, okay. Uh, maybe uh, 
we a plastic surgeon can be, do uh, to uh, septum uh, surgery, we take the nasal septum cartilage. But the for me, uh, this is not familiar to uh, do uh, inferior turbinate reduction or even the middle turbinate reduction. And the, these are very more familiar for the ENT surgeon. So uh, this is uh, the benefit for uh, collaboration with the ENT surgeon to plastic surgeon. Uh, I, I don't know the, what the condition you do uh, uh, inferior turbinate surgery or not, but the um, maybe uh, in Japanese doctors, they there are some uh, same situation in the other hospital. Uh, ENT surgeon do uh, turbinate surgery and the plastic surgeon do the, the external nose surgery. Yes, and uh, because when uh, when our patient, CLAP patient, if they need also nasty surgery, during the also nasty surgery, we can approach to the mm -hmm. uh, septum, the VAT septum mm -hmm. from below. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. usually after the level one fracture, we will try to do oh. the septal plasty at the same time mm -hmm. to leave the, the nasal obstruction. Mm -hmm. And for those patients, of course, for those patients uh, doesn't need uh, also nasty surgery, they may uh, have the nasal treatment the inside, uh, at the same time with, with the uh, rhinoplasty, if they mm -hmm. need, uh, need some revision surgery mm -hmm. after all the treatment protocol. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think the, this, uh, this two timing is the good timing for them mm -hmm. to get the uh, final definitive treatment mm -hmm. for the nasal passage. Mm -hmm. uh, because many of them, they could have a nasal obstruction because of the deviation and and sometimes the hypertrophic turbinate. Mm -hmm. And about the uh, the feeding plate, yes, I I think there may be some difference if, if we use the, uh, the the plate, the hard palate to, to separate the oral cavity and nasal passage. Uh, could there be any difference? I don't know, but in the future, maybe we can do some study to, to study those patients uh, had the plate separate the nasal and uh, oral passage to during their early feeding so that mm -hmm. the nasal mm -hmm. allergic re reaction can be mm -hmm. lower. Could that be uh, possible? Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, thank you, Professor Lin. And later, uh, I would like to invite our old friend, Professor Fayaz. Uh, hello, Professor Fayaz. Would you like to hello. give a Hi. comment? Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Hi, good evening. Hi, Dr. Fayaz. Honda. Yeah. Good evening. Uh, Dr. Honda, I have, I have two questions. I have put it already in the uh, question area. The first question is, uh, you are repairing the palatal fistula at the age of five years. So what is the rationale? Why not to repair it as early as possible? So you feel any benefit of postponing the palatal fistula repair at the age of five years? Okay. Uh, I try to uh, reduce the, the number of surgery uh, for the patients. If the, the surgery, do surgery uh, more earlier age, but we made the uh, alveolar bone graft surgery at the age of five or maybe eight to nine years old. So, so to reduce uh, the the chance of the surgery, uh, I will choose the surgery at the five years old. That means it's uh, same time with alveolar bone graft. So uh, I try not to uh, increase the number of surgery. That is the reason. And. Uh, do you feel any difficulty or problem when you combine the palatal fistula closure along with the alveolar bone grafting? Uh, if uh, the size of the uh, uh, fistula is not so uh, large, uh, I can use the local mucosa to close the oral fistula at the same time. So this is not difficult 
to do with the uh, albero bone graft. But the like the newer case, such like the very big uh, oronasal fistula, yeah, this is very uh, difficult to close with the uh, albero bone graft. So maybe in such case, I uh, would uh, plan for other uh, surgery, or maybe ask you to you how to do <laughs> manage the patient. <laughs> okay, and, and the second question was, uh, you mentioned in your slide that uh, for a VPI patient, you have, uh, you, whether you will do uh, furlopharyngoplasty, double opposing palatoplasty, or you will go for uh, thin, uh, thin, medium, and a big pharyngeal flap. So when you use a big pharyngeal flap, do you feel any increased risk of obstructive sleep apnea? Uh, yes, I usually worry about the, the respiratory problem after the pharyngeal flap surgery. Uh, so maybe, uh, uh, yes, uh, I use uh, the pharyngeal flap more uh, narrower than usual, but the uh, I, as I presented here, uh, I used I put the patient to the ICU for one night, and I also used uh, uh, nasal airway uh, during surgery to put in and remove it uh, the day after the surgery. After the surgery, um, I closely follow up for the patient about the sleep apnea. If there is any signs of sleep apnea, uh, I'll refer to the patient to the uh, pediatric physician or ENT surgeon uh, for the evaluation of the sleep apnea. I would like to mention what we do in our setup. Mm -hmm. uh, I was in uh, Morocco in the first week of December, and mm -hmm. they asked me to operate a, an adult patient who was 100. Uh, eight kilogram patient, and he had a short palate mm -hmm. and a, an anterior palatal fistula. So I repaired the fistula and I added a pharyngeal flap. Mm -hmm. What we asked our anesthesiologist is at the end of the surgery, when the patient is awake, if the patient can breathe through the nose with the lip closed, everything should remain fine. Mm -hmm. But if the patient cannot breathe with the lip closed, that means we have done something wrong to the patient. Mm -hmm. And we probably have done more than 500 pharyngeal flaps over a period of uh, eight to 10 years. We even do during our uh, left mission in remote areas. Mm -hmm. And we don't feel any problem, but we limit the size of the pharyngeal flap to 60% of the width of the posterior pharyngeal flap. Mm -hmm. That keeps us safe. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. Yeah, thank you, Professor Fayyas, a very valuable information. And now, uh, before the QA session, I would like to invite Professor Lowe uh, to give a, a final comment. Thank you, Professor Lowe. Oh, hello, uh, Dr. Honda. Hi, Hi Professor Lowe. Yes. Nice to meet you. It, uh, good, nice meeting you again. And it's uh, it's wonderful to hear your presentation. Mm -hmm. um, and con congratulations on your uh, your protocol and your achievement. Uh, let me uh, explain uh, what is my ideal protocol in my practice. I, I usually do lip repair at three months of age. I think this is common and uh, I do palate repair at nine months of age. I think between nine months to one year uh, doesn't make big difference. I prefer nine months because uh, it's already six months after the lip repair. It's three months before one year or where, uh, when the baby start to produce uh, some speech. Mm -hmm. So I like to do it uh, nine months of age. And I do uh, ABG, uh, nine years of age, I think uh, this is a common timing and protocol. Now, uh, regarding the, uh, the palate repair, I would uh, uh, mention that the, 
uh, as a as a craft surgeon, we should always be uh, very careful to prevent fistula. I know it is uh, not easy for young surgeon. Okay, it, because in uh, recently I attend a mission and I, I found a lot of big fistula. I think uh, mostly it is a technical error. Mm -hmm. Well, it, if we see a small fistula, that may also means that may not be, may not be a, a pedicle problem, but, oh, but it may be that the tension release is not adequate. So I think if we, when we perform the pilot repair, if we can adi adequately release the tension, the fistula should be rare. And uh, if you do not have fistula, and then you do not worry about the speech, and you do not worry about the you know fistula uh, reconstruction at the preschool age. So this is my comment on the uh, parietal fistula. I I think we are. I think uh, the audience we are all uh, craft surgeon. Uh, we should do our best to achieve uh, excellent results so that. Uh, we can reduce the number of surgery. I think Dr. Honda, you mentioned the reduction of the number of surgery, and this could reduce the burden of care. I think th uh, this is a current uh, quite quite important concept that we do an excellent job, and then we could reduce the burden of care. And reduce the VPI protocol. I, I, I agree with you that uh, we do uh, furlough when the VPI is marginal or minor, and we do uh, we do find your threat when the VPI is moderate to severe. And I also agree with you that currently we do more and more narrow find your threat. If the VPI is moderate or severe, we we do not do moderate or wide find your threat because uh, why or Moderate width fungal thread. Uh, many times you will you will see the nasal obstruction, the airway problem, the speech problem. So even if the closure ratio is zero point five or zero point four, zero point three, uh, our speech pathologists will recommend narrow width fungal thread. Okay. Mm -hmm. The narrow width, uh, in my definition, is about fifty percent of the posterior fungal wall. And if you can do it well, you have the good lining, the pharyngeal thread do not shrink, do not tuberize. I think the uh, the effect could be okay. I think the patient prefer to have a mild hypernasality rather than nasal obstruction. Yeah. And pharyngeal thread, I think the mobility is quite quite large. Patient will feel uh, you know foreign body sensation. Mm -hmm. Patient have snoring and all kind of the problem, so more and more we do uh, narrow fungal thread for a, v, a moderate to severe VPI. So this is our current trend. Mm -hmm. Now, for the VPI management, I found that there's two phases of VPI management. One is preschool age, and uh, where is the initial uh, anatomical failure? Uh, we do uh, VP surgery at the preschool age. And the other timing is in the nine years old. Uh, we do VP surgery together with the ABG, alveolar bone graft. Because seven years, eight years of age, the adenoid uh, began to shrink. Then the patient may de develop VPI. So I think another good timing is the nine years of age together with the VP. Uh, with, with the available bone graft. So this is another uh, reason that we can reduce the burden by combining the surgery into one general uh, anesthesia. I think uh, this is also a, a, a good uh, practice for, uh, for, you know, for the craft surgeon. Now, regarding the available bone graft, I think there is a discussion that why you do a real bone graft at five years of age, why not do it at nine years of age? You know, 25 years ago, we do uh, ABG at five years of age. Oh, really? If patients do not have a crepe palate, 
only credit and alveolar crack. And nine years of age, if the patient has credit and palate. Now, we abandon the five years old repair of the alveolar crack uh, because, uh, you know, that, that is for later incisor, but that also introduce a lot of confusion for the family, for the, for the parents, because parents always ask, why my kids nine years of age and they do it five years of age. Mm -hmm. So you have to keep explaining why five years, why nine years. So at the end, we, we said that, okay, we do nine years of age. And this is also in accordance with the uh, global uh, you know, agreement mm -hmm. that we do it because of the canine, not mm -hmm. for the lateral incisor. So mm -hmm. I think it, uh, this is the, uh, the, 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 the trend. Now, regarding the final management, uh, because I, I, uh, before that, I would, I would mention that if we do a good job uh, from between nine year, one year of age and 18 years of age, we may only have an ABG in between, no other surgery, and all, only follow up the patient. I think th this could also reduce the fear of the patient reduce of the burden of care. I think this is also uh, in, an important concept. Now, when patients reach uh, skeletal maturity, we plan orthodontic treatment and orthodontic surgery. Uh, orthodontic surgery, we try to do uh, conventional orthodontic surgery, two-jaw surgery, uh, try to avoid uh, uh, destruction because to me, I think destruction is a very uh, in inconvenient and also uncomfortable procedure uh, for the patient. I, we do not do destruction for the patient with crack. Uh, we do routinely uh, uh, also Nazi surgery uh, because I think if we can, if you can advance the maxilla, for example, 10 millimeter of advancement. If you can set back of the mandible another 10 millimeter, then you have 20 millimeter of the uh, of the uh, of the movement for you to uh, compensate the discrepancy. So I think we should try to do uh, orthodontic surgery rather than destruction. Of course, they may have some uh, very difficult situation where you should consider destruction, but I think that should be rare consideration. Now, Dr. Honda, I have a question because you mentioned that uh, you do you ask ENT doctor to do septoplasty at the time of OGS, orthodontic surgery. I would uh, be careful about not doing the septoplasty. Certainly, when we do the also, Nazi surgery, we divide the septal cartilage from the vomer bone, right? But I do not, I do not like to reset the septal cartilage for the septal plasty because one year later I will do deep and nose revision. I do open renal plasty. I will have to use the septal cartilage for the nasal tip augmentation. So I will preserve the septal cartilage. Do you, when you secondary after OGS, when you do the, the renal plasty, you don't, you, you don't use septal cartilage? Uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, thank you for the uh, question. Uh, I, I don't do, you do the uh, septal, uh, septal surgery at the concomitant with the also gnatic surgery. This is separate surgery. So uh, if I, you do- uh, Separate surgery? Yes, yes. So separate. I, I, Separate. Okay. Yes. Uh, I use the, as you say, uh, I use the septal cartilage graft for the nose. But this is concomitant okay. with uh, septal surgery and the rhinoplasty. This is separate from okay. the os osogranic surgery. Oh, it's not a combined surgery. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Thank you very much for many comments. <laughs> <laughs> I Thank have you. a pharyngeal I... flap surgery uh, the day after tomorrow. I do the narrow flap. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, thank you for your presentation. Thank you very much.
Okay, thank you, Professor Lowe's. Or now, uh, I'd like to uh, ask uh, three questions from our audience in our chat room. Uh, the first of all is from Dr. Percy. Uh, dear Professor Honda, what is your opinion regarding two stage primary cleft platoplasty? Yes, Professor. Okay, thank you. Uh, yeah. Currently, I don't have experience about the two stage platoplasty. So, uh, Maybe in Japan, the maxillofacial surgeon, uh, they have uh, actively uh, doing the two-stage palatoplasty, but the uh, plastic surgeon, uh, most of, of uh, uh, they apply for the one stage, so I don't have any experience about two-stage. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, thank you, Professor Honda. Uh, the second question is from Dr. Samed. And uh, what is your opinion about using the fan flap, uh, facial artery muscular uh, uh, flaps, uh, to close the fistula in posterior pallet? Yeah, thank you, Professor Hunter. Uh, also, uh, I don't have uh, experience about the fan. I mean, the uh, facial artery muscular uh, because of flap. I know uh, that flap, but the uh, uh, Fortunately, I don't have uh, such a situation that usually I can close the, with the uh, local flap, or maybe I would choose more familiar, the town flap procedure. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. The final question is, the, uh, dear Professor Honda, uh, have you encountered any cyst formation uh, as the complication post alveolar bone grafting? Uh, from the Dr. Rah Rahija, and uh, he said uh, he means that you do it at the age of five years. There are two spots uh, underneath, and uh, you put a plate in the state of spleen to hold the bone rub. So do you have any comment uh, in your experience to have any cyst formation? Yes, please. Thank you very much. Uh... I don't have experience of the cyst formation, and the for ABG I don't use the any uh, springs or plates to hold the graft. So anyway, I don't have experience about the cyst formation. Is there anyone have experience? Yeah, any anyone has experience have cyst formation post the ABG at the age of five years. Hmm. I don't have any experience of the cyst formation, even five years or nine years of age. Mm -hmm. the professor Fayas? No. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so, very much. Yeah. Thank you, Professor Handa. So now we conclude the, this meeting and uh, end up always all the question is finished. Uh, later, I would like to, this is it. My favorite uh, session is to invite all of you to have a good photo. <laughs> so please, uh, all uh, our friends, please open your screen and uh, together, uh, even uh, you are in the daytime or nighttime, uh, even in front of Japan or in front of Europe and Asia or the United States. Thank you very much for Professor Honda. Very uh, impressive uh, lecture. Uh, tell me about the Japanese the experience. Oh. And uh, thank you for our three panelists, Dr. Lan, Dr. Mellon, and Dr. Chen. Chen. Yeah. So now I will count to three. And uh, please give me your smile. Okay. Mm -hmm. One, two, three. And uh, one more uh, to the other page. And uh, once again, one, two, three. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much for your full support, ICC. And okay. I would like to uh, express my gratitude and uh, say Happy New Year for all of you. Uh, our next uh, presentation is three weeks later. The speaker is the Professor Michael Lipka, and uh, the professor in uh, Kansas City will give the lecture about how to deal with complex uh, alveolar cleft. So looking forward to your participation again. Okay. Uh, thank you. Good morning. Again. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very bye -bye. much. Bye bye. Thank you very much. Bye. Thank you, thank you bye. Professor Handa.
best wishes okay. for the new year for everyone thank you professor bye bye yeah bye 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 thank you bye bye, bye.